Hi there, and welcome to another pencast for the course Reasoning and Logic. In this pencast, we're going to take a look at some differences between the for all and the there exists quantifiers. Now, hopefully, it's quite clear that these two things mean very different things. One says that something is true for everything in the universe, and that there exists says that there is at least one thing for which something is true. But there's also differences when we use different connectives with them. Consider, for instance, these two statements. For all x, p of x implies q of x, and for all x, p of x and q of x. Similarly, for there exists, there exists an x such that p of x implies q of x, and there exists an x such that p of x and q of x hold. Let's start with the first two. Let's start by comparing the two different quantifiers, implies and and, when used with for all. The first says that all objects that have property P also have property Q. The second, however, says that all objects have both properties P and Q. And I hope you realize that these are two very different statements. In the first situation, all objects that have property P must also have property Q. But there could very well be objects that have, do not have property P in the second case, however, we say that all objects in the whole universe must have both property P and property Q. For concrete examples, this is the difference between saying all humans are mortal and saying all things are humans and all things are mortal. I hope you see that these are really two different statements. Now let's take a look at these there exist statements. There exists an X, so that px implies qx, and there exists an x for which px and qx hold. The first one, the implication, says that there is an object such that if that object has property p, then it also has property q. Now consider the following scenario. Consider an object x that does not have property p. What happens to this statement? Well, this statement is still true. Because p of x is false for our x, and therefore the implication holds. So this thing, this implication, I would argue is a relatively useless statement. It does not mean that there is some object with property p. So if we want to say that there is an object that has both property p and q, we should use number four. We should say that there is an x that has property p and has property q. So I hope you see now that these statement one and three are really very different. And statement three is one that's, well, relatively useless and one you hardly ever see. Whereas statement one is very useful to describe a group of objects having a certain property. The ones you see most often are statement one and statement four. You often want to say something about all objects having property P, also having something else. Consider, for instance, a statement like, all humans are mortal. You want to say something about all things that have the property of being human, also having the property of being mortal. And statement four is one you use when you're describing a single thing. For instance, there is a mortal human, you would, could describe using statement four. There is an X that has the property of being human, and it has the property of being mortal. Statement two and three are statements you hardly ever see, but hardly ever does not mean never, of course. Sometimes you want to say that all things in the world or all things in the universe have a certain property. Statement three, well, I must admit I've never seen it out there in the wild, but if you come across it, do let me know. That's it for this one. We've seen the differences between for all and exists, and specifically when used with an implication or a conjunction. See you around for the next one.